Here are today's targets. The first target is the barracks and we will be using Claire pre-planned with an attack heading of 3-4 degrees. The second target will be the bunker attacking from the west to avoid smoke from the first weapon. The barracks attack will be with a relatively low angle aligned with the long aspect of the building. The bunker attack will be vertical to avoid surrounding buildings and to achieve better penetration. This diagram shows the HUD presentation for the GBU-24 laser guided bomb. The bomb has two computed launch acceptable region modes or CLAIR modes, straight line and pre-planned, and one manual mode. The bomb also has three release regions, early, primary, and late, which are bounded by the weapon's maximum and minimum launch ranges. You can also control when the pickle when you pickle the weapon and when the laser is firing to guide the weapon. All this flexibility allows you to control the heading from which the weapon is dropped and the approximate dive angle the weapon uses as it approaches the target, either low, medium, or high. For example, an early release near max range will result in a lower relative dive angle to the target, where a late release near minimum range will result in a higher relative dive angle to the target. The asthma steering line or ASL is dashed when the pickle button is deactivated. In non-override, the pickle is deactivated when the dropping release ball is either above the max line or below the mid line. When the release ball is between the max and mid lines, the weapons will release when the pickle is pressed in the manual mode or when the pickle is pressed and held when the release ball intersects the velocity vector in either straight line or pre-planned clear mode. This is the thought diagram. Thought diagrams are used by air crew to picture in their mind how aircraft or weapon systems work. It's not designed to be a detailed description, but is created to break down an aircraft or weapon system into the essential details that the aircrew really needs to know. They can be carried in the cockpit, but if the diagram does what it's supposed to, then it is almost never used in the cockpit. By creating this diagram, the pilot builds an image of the system's function in his mind. In that sense, a thought diagram is personal and won't work for everyone. I'll describe what the GBU-24 diagram does for me. First, the GBU-24 has three modes, manual, clear straight line, and clear pre-planned, represented horizontally in the diagram, and three release periods represented vertically in the diagram as early release, weapon or primary release, and late release, determined by where the release uh, queue drop ball is located relative to the maximum range and minimum range lines on the HUD. Each of the release periods has two conditions, either non-override or override, for a total of 18 different delivery options. Right off the bat, six can be eliminated. All non-override options for both early and late releases, because these all place the weapon in safe mode, indicated by a dashed asthma steering line. Hello folks, here we are on our way to the target, en route to the target, um, and we're going to go through the uh, setup for the GPU-24 laser guided uh, glide bomb. First we'll do the fence and checklist, uh, which involves uh, a number of things. I'm going to go to air to ground mode, leave the master off uh, for now, turn the Dispenser switch to by bypass the ECM to receive only. That's down here, I guess, and bypass here. And uh, we're going to put our ECM, our ALR67 power power on. And we're just going to make sure that our flare is cooling down, and it is. And we're going to go ahead and take our um, laser tar target designator switch to on to arm and I'm going to put FLIR on the uh, right DDI and we'll watch as it uh, times down with the LTD switch uh, on 
we have uh, uh, trigger available here in the upper right. Um, we can box it or not. Right now we'll leave it unboxed. And then uh, we've got uh, 1748, which is my the code that I use uh, for laser weapons uh, when I'm self-lasing. And it's the LTDC uh, code there. And I placed that in uh, prior to launch today. Now what we're going to do is uh, put the weapon, we have to match the, the laser code in the weapon. That's in the pod. So over here on DDI-1, um, and since I want to put the same code in all four weapons, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, select code first on the DDI-1 and then code on the UFC. And then I'm going to put in my code, 1748, enter. And then I'll go back over here and select the weapon. And you can see that the code is in all four weapons. So the simple rule here is if you want to put the same code in multiple weapons, select code first. If you want to put in different codes into individual weapons, select the weapon first and then step through each weapon entering the code you desire. Okay, a few other things we want to do for this mission. Um, as we discussed earlier, we have two targets, a bunker and a barracks. The barracks being the longitudinal target where we're going to use a low angle um, for the weapon. And so we're going to want to release the weapon at uh, or close to max range. Whereas for the second target, the bunker, we want a very vertical uh, delivery angle. And so we're going to um, release the weapon late or close to the min range or maybe even slightly beyond the min range uh, of the weapon. Okay, so we uh, obviously select um, pre-planned for the mode and we just make sure that's selected and since this is a laser guided weapon typically for a fuse we do tail only so we'll do tail only here. Now we're going to put two weapons on each target uh, so we're going to select UFC on DDI-1 and then quantity to enter. We'll leave the malt at 1 and we're going to put an interval of 300 feet. And that's just to give the weapons some separation as they fall to the singular target, which is the aiming point for the laser beam. Okay, now the last thing we want to put in for the pre-plan is the attack heading. And uh, from our chart, we can see that that's going to be 34 degrees. So we go back to the UFC for Claire, and then we hit heading, and then we put in 34 degrees, enter. And you can see it enters it, uh, and it's displayed on DDI-1. So backing out again here. Now up here on the HUD, we can see that we've got uh, Claire is X'd out, and that's because we still have the master arm switch off which I intend to turn on once we uh, are on final uh, for the attack. I am going to go ahead and uh, uh, box trigger over here on the right uh, uh, screen. And uh, that's just so that um, we can control when we fire the laser rather than an auto laser. So we want to fire the laser with the trigger when we want it. Okay, so that's boxed. And the other thing we want to box is Claire Override. And that's because we want a hot pickle. And I'm going to go ahead and box that now. Because uh, we're going to, like I said, we don't want to drop it at the optimum point, which is when the New Year's ball that drops down on the SMA steering line intersects the velocity vector or flight path marker. We don't want that. What We want to be able to um, release the weapon uh, when it hits either uh, the max range or the min range, depending on which attack we're talking about. So, those things are set up. And let me just quickly review to make sure I've got everything. Oh, I want to put in the same course that we put in for our attack heading uh, uh, for the weapon. Uh, we want to put it in our course steer steering needle to give us a little bit of visibility to help us, uh, to aid us in um, uh, flying in on the proper heading, proper course. So I'm going to go ahead and slew the course uh, knot or toggle and type in 34 and hit enter. 
and we're going to cycle through our ranges on our MPCD so we can see where our target is. Now our target is on waypoint 2 which we will uh, designate and I'll go ahead and do that now. Boom. And obviously it takes our our FLIR and points it at the target and it gives us a diamond there on the uh, screen. It also gives us a little diamond on the MPCD and we can just um, show where our course uh, arrow is uh, intersecting. And so I just want to intercept that uh, to drive up that uh, arrow towards the target on 34 degrees or within 20, within 20 degrees of that 34 degrees is all that I need. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and turn on the HMD as well. And we'll be able to see where the target is right there along the coast. So we're building a little bit of separation here in order to, to uh, um, have enough time on the uh, drive into the target to turn like the master arm on. And the main thing is that we need to reposition the laser aim point because right now it's aiming at the point, the pre-designated point, which is the bunker. And the first target we're going to hit is going to be the barracks. It looks like we fell off the autopilot there. Okay, folks, uh, we're back again. I am going to put the sensor select to DDI2, and you can see the little diamond in the upper right hand corner there and uh, I'm also going to uh, zoom in a little bit on the target see if we can see anything and I'm going to go from uh, TV mode to IR mode maybe we can spot things a little better we'll see now currently it's pointing at the bunker and we've got to move it to the barracks here once we turn on final and at this distance, let's see, about uh, 22 miles, we got three radials uh, per degree. So it's going to be about a three mile turn radius or so. So we're about ready to turn. Okay, and what we're trying to do is get within, um, we want to be within 20 degrees of 34, our attack heading in order to get the orange box to show on the MPCD. And the importance of that is that that's the, the parameters that we need in order to get a, a valid release to the weapons release button. Okay, and I think we're, we're pretty good here. We're within 20. We're well within that. And I just want to get on the uh, asthma steering line as close and I'll hit uh, altitude hold. I'm going to go ahead and turn the master arm on to get rid of the X. And here comes the New Year's Eve ball. And now I want to go over to the uh, um, FLIR. And let's just take a look at uh, repositioning. So that that's the tip of the barracks we're seeing right now. So as we uh, approach the target, we'll get more visibility. But I think that placement is pretty good. It's pretty long barracks. And because we want to get a low angle on this, and I'm saying probably about 45 degrees or so, because what we don't want to do is uh, hit the tops of those buildings on the near side here. We want to make sure we clear that. And here comes the ball. About 30 seconds to go for TMR, and that's about the time we want to release these weapons. And I want to hold the weapons release button down long enough to get both weapons off the airplane. Okay, and I think that's a pretty good position on the laser. And uh, we can still mess, mess with that a little bit. Uh, and we're going to want to turn the laser on at about 32-ish. Okay, here comes the ball in range. Hold the pickle down. Both weapons are off. 
and I'm looking for about 32 TTI. And we'll hold that. And I'm going to reposition the laser just a little bit more right about there. Okay. Another 10 seconds or so. And once I start lasing, I'm going to go ahead and, and we'll look, take a look at the weapon. 33, 32, boom, there we go, we're doing that. And now uh, the weapons have both picked up the laser signal because you can see they're leveling off here. And look at the separation. There's plenty of separation between the two weapons created by that 300 foot interval. And this is probably a little less than uh, 45 degrees, maybe 30 degrees, something like that. But I think we're going to be, it's high enough to avoid the, uh, the buildings. Oh, yes. Very good hit. Okay, so let's head out to the west for the second uh, attack. The challenge here is there's going to be a lot of smoke from the um, first weapon that's going to kind of mask the uh, the target you can see it's kind of blowing right over the uh, the area where the second target is so we're going to sneak in from kind of the southwest or so now we could just pick a heading and and do it in pre-plan but uh, that's a little bit more complicated than I want to try right now so I just want to be able to drive in on any heading and release the weapon like a normal uh, laser bomb would work. So I'm going to go to straight line. So first of all, I'm going to go to um, autopilot. And um, I first of all, I'm going to reposition or, or undesignate the target and redesignate it because we know the bunker is waypoint two. And the bunker is what we're going after. And it's right in the middle of all those buildings. So this has to be pretty vertical in order to meet to miss all those buildings. We're going to go out about uh, 14 miles or so and then turn inbound. And the other thing we want to do is change the mode from pre-planned to straight line, which takes away the heading because this is a uh, any heading will do weapon mode. Uh, we want to maintain override because we want to release the weapon when we want to release it. And we're going to also leave the trigger box boxed um, in order to uh, control when the laser is firing. Okay, uh, 13 miles, another one, one or mile, a little bit over a mile to go yet. Okay, that's 14 miles. We're going to go ahead and turn inbound. Oh boy, there's a little bit of, there's some clouds there. I may drive south just a little bit to get out from underneath those clouds. Not much. That may make the geometry with those buildings a little. I think I'm just going to bet that those clouds are going to end in enough time for me to reposition the laser. And even if I can't reposition it, right now it is, it should be right on the center of that uh, that target. So unless I'm absolutely certain I know where I am, or I am probably not going to reposition it. We'll just see. Notice that the asthma steering line is solid. I'm going to cycle the override switch off, and you can see that it's a, a dashed line. And that just tells us that we no longer have a hot pickle. It's in the safe mode. So I'm going to go back to override so we have a hot pickle. I have the master arm on. It is. And uh, I think we're repositioned to the right target. We have 23 seconds to TMR. Uh, but remembering that we're not going to drop the weapon at max range. We're going to drop it maybe a little after min range. A little nervous because of the clouds. Oop. We're kind of seeing through it a little bit, but we got a ways to go yet. And I can reposition the laser if I need to, even after I've released the weapons. 
uh, we're still quantity two molt one and with a spacing of 300 feet come on clouds let's go okay it looks like it's maybe clearing here okay there's the min range I'm gonna wait a couple of seconds and then uh, release both weapons okay where's the cloud ending come on I'm not gonna reposition unless I absolutely need to I think I oh boy come on I'm gonna reposition just a little bit right like that okay let's go ahead and take a look at the weapons firing the laser Yeah. Okay. Both weapons got plenty of separation. Let's hope it hits. Oh, yes. Right in there. Okay. Mission success both times. All right, guys. That's basically uh, how you can manage a GBU-24 mission and uh, the switchology that is involved. Okay, guys, we will talk to you later. Any remarks, just uh, any questions, put them in the remarks.